In today's episode of the simulator series, we are going to be creating an auto clicker system in our game. In our game, there's going to be two different auto clickers, and whenever we turn them on, we will start passively earning points while we do absolutely nothing. With that being said, I have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that we make during this episode, there's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's get right into it. So, hop in directly into studio so that we can begin scripting this GUI. We'll go inside of the star GUI and inside of our click bonus GUI and add a brand new local script to this. Now, we're going to rename the local script to manager. The name of this doesn't actually matter but i'd rather my script be named manager than just plain old local script anyways inside of here we want to create a variable for the replicated storage now that we got that we want to create a variable for the remote folder inside of the replicated storage so we'll do so just like that now we can start creating variables for this gui itself so we'll say local gui equals script dot parent then we can create a variable for the frame so gui dot frame now inside of the frame we have three different buns so we'll say local click equals frame dot click local fast auto and we're saying auto so that we can remember this has something to do with the auto click button and that'll be equal to the frame dot fast and then local regular auto equals frame dot regular just like that now the first thing we'll do is script this click button right here which is the main button that players are enticed to click on whenever they actually see it and considering we already scripted the clicking system in the last episode which was really simple we're just firing the click remote every single time we click in our game that's all that we have to do for this as well so we're going to say click dot mouse button one click connect function and all we have to do is go inside the remotes look for the click remote and then fire server and that's it there we go with that out of the way we can begin scripting the two auto clicker buttons before we start scripting the functionality of those let's actually start creating a couple of static variables so we'll create a variable called button off color and that's going to be equal to color three dot from rgb and now the way that we're going to get this color is by going to our fast button and looking for the background color so this is the background color right there in rgb so we can paste this right here and we can now see that this variable is equal to a red color that looks just like that so we're going to duplicate this variable and we'll rename it from off to on color and now we want to make an on color and realistically all we want to do is adjust this red to a green because that's what our on color is going to look like just like that so now that we have the on and off color inside of variables we can use those whenever we want to script these buttons to make them look like they're on or make them appear that they're off in addition to the background colors we also have to adjust the color of the stroke inside of those as well so let's go ahead and just duplicate these two variables right here and instead of saying button off color we'll say stroke off color just like that so replace buttons again so then for the stroke color we can just get this color and all we have to do is just make it a little bit darker and i think that looks pretty good and then we want to do the exact same for the off color as well and just make it a little bit darker so now those both look pretty good the last static variable that we want to create is going to be called clicker underscore text underscore template and now what this variable is going to be set to is if we look inside of our text label and get this text right here we can see that the text says fast auto clicker and off now with this text we can actually turn this into a template so that we don't have to retype this multiple times and what i mean by this is we'll replace the word fast with type in all caps and then we'll also replace the word off with mode in all caps as well and the reason for this is because we're going to be using this string as sort of a template for both the fast and regular auto clickers so whenever we're working with both of these we wanted to either say fast or regular for the type and then for the mode we want them to say either on or off and if this is confusing for you don't worry you'll understand when we get further into it now additionally we want to make two more variables the first variable is going to be called regular mode and we're going to set that to false by default and we'll also say fast mode and we're going to set that to false as well now what these two variables are referring to is if the player has their fast or regular auto clicker on or off so anytime the player's regular or fast auto clicker are enabled we're going to change these variables as well next what we're going to do is underneath our variables but above the click listener we'll create a brand new function called update button and this is going to accept a button type which is actually going to be either regular or fast so it's going to be a string and the second variable is going to be mode which is going to be a boolean now inside of this function we'll create a brand new variable called button now the way that we're going to be sending this variable is based upon what button type we actually get passed to us so we'll say if button type make sure you say button type not button so if button type equals regular then we're going to set the button variable equal to the regular auto which is an image button just like that and then we also want to adjust the regular mode variable which is a boolean and we're going to set that to the mode which is passed to us whenever this function is called just like that now if the button type is not equal to regular then we automatically know that it's equal to fast so we're then going to want to set the button to fast auto just like that and we're also going to want to set the fast mode to the mode that's passed to us whenever this function is called as well just like that so now that we have that all set up and now that we have the button variable set to whatever specific button it should be the next thing we want to check is the mode so if the mode which means if the mode is set to true or if we're going to turn this button on then what we want to do is we want to adjust the background color and we want to set that to the button 
on color. We also want to adjust the button dot label and we want to modify the text and we're going to set that equal to the click text template and we're going to actually use the G sub method on this so that we can start replacing certain things inside of the string. And the first thing we want to do is we want to replace the word type in all caps with the button type that is passed to this function. So we're going to replace type with either regular or fast and then we also want to G sub this a second time because we want to replace mode with on because inside of this if statement this means that we're turning the button on so we want to replace that text with the word on. Additionally we want to modify the label text color as well and make sure that we're adjusting the text color three because we can just set that equal to the exact same button color as well so we'll set that equal to the button on color if you set this to text color then you'll get an error so make sure you set that to text color three and the final thing that we need to adjust is the ui stroke inside of the button and we're going to set the color of that that can be just dot color and that's going to be set to the stroke on color just like that so now that we have that all done we pretty much just have to do the opposite by using an else statement and then we can just copy this paste that right there and basically just replace the word on with off so on to off 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 and now that's all good so now we have that function set up let's actually go ahead and start listening to whenever we click on those two buttons so we'll say fast auto dot mouse button one click connect function and for right now we're just going to call the update button function and we'll pass through fast and then we'll also pass through not fast mode just so we can actually test the buttons functionality out and make sure that it all looks good so then we can go ahead and start up our game and test this out once we get into our game we can go ahead and click on fast auto and we can see that the text changes the color the ui stroke the background color and everything else like that is also changed as well and we can see fast auto clicker on so the text is also changing as well and if we click it again we can see it updates to off on off on every time we click it so that's working perfectly now that we know this function is all good to go what we're then actually going to do is we're going to go inside of replicated storage inside of the remotes folder and we're going to add a brand new remote event and this remote event is going to be called update auto clicker just like that then whenever we click on this button we actually want to fire that remote event so we're going to say remotes dot update auto clicker fire server and we'll also pass through the bond type as well so we're going to say fast because this is whenever we're clicking the fast auto button then we're going to duplicate this and just rename this from fast auto to regular auto and then of course we want to make sure that whenever we're calling this remote event we're going to pass through regular finally at the bottom of our script we also want to listen for that remote event to be called as well so remotes dot update auto clicker dot on client event connect and we want to connect that to the update button function just like that so now there's one more thing that we need to do inside of the script and that's actually get the player's data whenever they join the game because we need to see if the player has the regular or fast auto clicker turned on or off and we did this in a previous video and we used the get data remote function but what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that remote function and rename this from get data to get auto click mode then at the bottom of our script we're going to call the update button function we'll pass through regular and now for the mode we are going to say remotes dot get auto click mode invoke server and we'll pass through regular to the server so that the server knows we're looking for the regular auto click and then we can duplicate this and instead of saying regular we will say fast for both of those and there we go okay so this entire thing has now been scripted on the client side and now we need to start doing work on the server side so what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of our server script service inside of the player data and we're going to go inside of our template now we have to adjust our template because we're actually adding brand new player data to our game and the brand new player data that we're going to be adding is going to be called auto which is going to be set to a table and inside of this table we have both of the modes so we're going to have fast and we're going to also have regular as well now each of these are going to be set to a table as well and inside of this table we want to have two properties active which by default is going to be set to false and duration which by default is going to be set to zero so now that we have the fast table created we also want to create the regular table as well and that's going to have the same properties so active equals false duration equals zero now one way to make your data a a little bit nicer and not so nested what we'll do is we'll create a variable up here called default auto info and that's going to be set to a table and that's actually just going to be set to the exact table that we created down below so active equals false comma duration equals zero and now instead of specifying that table inside of both of these all we have to do is set them equal to that variable right there and there we go you could do it the other way but i like to do it this way because the data seems a little bit more organized and it doesn't get super nested because when we have all of our player data completed we are going to have a lot of things inside of this template table and it could look pretty ugly if we create them all inside of each other so that's why we're creating this variable right here to clean it up and make it look a little bit nicer anyways now that we've created the data we're going to go inside of the manager and as we see we listen to the get data remote function right here we're basically going to do the exact same thing for the get auto click mode remote function that we created here so we'll replace the get data with that and then we'll also create a new function which we can literally just copy this get data function right here and then we'll rename that to get auto click mode and then for the second argument it's going to be button type which is either going to be fast or regular 
dealer. So then we're going to still get the profile. And if we don't get the profile, then we're going to return N. But then at the end, we want to say return profile.data.auto. And then we need to index that with the button type. So it's either going to be fast or regular. And then we need to say dot active. So if you're confused by this, remember, we're saying player.data, which is basically equal to this table right here. Then we're saying dot auto because we want to go inside of this table right here. And then we're indexing this table with either fast or regular to get this information right here. And then we can index that with dot active because that's inside of that table as well. So hopefully this is making more sense to you. So anyway, now that we have that, we have to make sure that we set the remote function to that function just like that. And anytime that function is called, the data will be returned and that's all working perfectly. Next, we'll go into the server script service and create a brand new script. And we'll rename this script from script to auto click. Now inside of the script, we're gonna need a couple of the basic variables. We're gonna want the replicate storage, the server script service, and then we're also gonna get the players as well. So let's make sure that we create a variable for all of those. Then of course, we're gonna want the remotes folder. So replicated storage dot remotes. And we also need to get the player data module as well. So we'll say local player data equals require server script service dot player data dot manager. And then let's go ahead and create a brand new function, which is gonna be called update auto clicker, just like that. The first argument is gonna be a player. And the second one is gonna be the button type, which of course is gonna be either fast or regular. Then we can use the remotes variable and we're going to index that with the update auto clicker remote event. And we're going to listen to this. So on server event, and we'll connect that to the update auto clicker function, just like that. Now, inside of the update auto clicker function, we're going to want to get the player's profile. So we'll say local profile equals player data dot profiles and index that with the player. If not profile, then return. And now we want to create a variable to see if the button is actually active. So we're going to say local is active and we're going to set that equal to profile dot data dot auto. And we'll index that with the button type and we'll get dot active so that we can see if the player's button is currently on or not. Additionally, we want to create a variable for the duration as well. So we'll copy this variable right here. And instead of indexing active, we'll actually index duration. Then we can create an if statement and we can say if is active then. And now if the auto clicker is turned on, we of course want to turn it off. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this right here. So we're saying profile.data.auto index that with the button type dot active. And we're going to set that to false. And then additionally, we'll go into the remotes, use the update auto clicker remote event, and we'll fire client. We'll pass through the player and we'll pass through the bond type and we'll also pass through false because we just disabled the player's auto clicker. So we want them to know that we've turned it off. Okay, so that's pretty simple. If the bun's already on, then we're just going to turn it off. But then we'll say else if not is active. So if the bun is not currently on and the duration is greater than zero, meaning that the player actually is able to turn it on, then what we want to do is we just basically want to do the opposite of what we did here. So we'll set this to true and then we'll also pass true as the value for this as well. And now we're able to easily turn on or off the player's auto clicker. So now if you're confused by this else if statement at all, basically we're checking if it's currently off and if the player is able to turn it on because how our system will work is we'll actually reward a player a temporary amount of time for their auto clicker to work and we'll modify the duration so that we can track how long that auto clicker is supposed to last for. So then we know that the only time the player is allowed to turn their auto clicker on is if the duration is above zero and if it's not already on. Okay, so we can actually test some of this functionality. Let's go back to our template and let's set the default duration to 10 so that we actually have some duration inside of it so that the duration is greater than zero and we can start up our game. And now if we go ahead and click on the regular auto clicker, we can see that the bun does turn on. If we click on fast auto clicker, we can see that the bun turns off on and everything else like that. So those buns are both working perfectly fine. The communication between the server and the client are working great. So that means that we have made good progress so far. We'll also leave the duration at 10. And at the end of the video, we'll reset it back to zero just so we can continue further testing. Going back inside of the auto click script, we actually have to start scripting the auto click functionality. So what we're going to do is we're going to say while true do. And we'll be using this while loop to basically make the auto clickers work. Now at the bottom of this, we want to make sure that we say task.wait.5 so that it waits half a second before running again. The next thing we want to do is we want to loop through every single player that's currently in the game. So for underscore player in players get players do, and then we want to get that player's profile. So we can copy that variable right there and paste it just like that. Now, instead of saying if not profile, then return, we actually want to say if not profile, then continue end because we don't want to break out of this loop. Otherwise we'll have issues. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create more variables just like how we did up here. So we're going to say local is regular active and we're going to set that equal to the profile.data.auto. And so we'll copy that just like that. And now instead of indexing auto with the button type, we're actually going to index that with regular and then active. So just like that. And we'll create a variable for regular duration. And we'll set that instead of dot active to dot duration. And then we can duplicate both of those variables and basically replace regular 
with fast. So fast, fast, just like that, and then change the variable name. So fast aeration and it is fast active. And there we go. That's working perfectly. Okay. So the way that this is basically going to work is regular auto clickers are basically going to click one time per second, while our fast auto clicker is going to click two times per second. So this might get a little confusing, but stick it out with me to the end and you should understand it all. What we're going to do is we're going to say if is fast active then. So this will mean that the player has their fast auto clicker turned on. What we then want to do is we want to use the player data and adjust the player's clicks. So we'll pass through the player and the amount of clicks that we want to give them. We'll just say one for right now. Then what we want to do is we want to create a variable outside of this while loop and it's going to be called is second and that's going to be set to false by default. Then inside of this while loop, we're going to say is second equals not is second. So every single time this while loop runs, is second is going to change from false to true to false to true to false to true. And now what is second is being used as here is basically a way to see how many times this while loop has gone through. So considering this while loop should run two times per second because the task dot wait is half a second, we're going to be using is second to tell us if this is the second time that it's running in this specific second. So if this variable is set to true, then that means that this would be the second time the while loop is running in the signal second. So back inside of the if statement for is fast active, if fast is active, then we also want to check if is second then, and if is second is true, then we want to adjust the duration of the player's fast auto clicker. So we'll grab this variable right here and we'll say profile.data.auto.fast.duration minus equals one second. So we're subtracting one second from the player's duration. Now that we've done that, we want to go back inside of the if is fast active statement and we want to say if profile.data.auto.fast.duration. So we want to check if the duration is less than or equal to zero, because if it's less than or equal to zero, then we actually need to turn the player's auto clicker off and also notify them that their auto clicker ran out as well. So we'll say profile.data.auto.fast.active equals false because we're turning that auto clicker off. And then we'll also use the remotes and we'll use the update auto clicker remote and fire that to the client. So we'll pass through the player. We'll say fast. And then we'll also pass through false because we're telling them that we're going to turn off the fast auto clicker. And there we go. The fast auto clicker has now all been handled. And now we have to do something similar for the regular auto clicker. So we're going to say if is second and is regular active then. Now the reason that we're checking if is second is because remember with the regular auto clicker we only want to give them one click per second but for the fast one we want to do it two times per second so we're checking if this is the second time running because we don't want the regular auto clicker to run more than once per second then we'll adjust the player's clicks just like how we did up here so we can copy and paste that and then we also need to adjust the player's duration for the regular auto clicker just like that and then we basically have to do the exact same check right here so we'll copy and paste that as well and then we'll say instead of fast we'll say regular so if the regular duration is less than or equal to zero then we want to set the act of the false and then we also want to tell the client to turn off their regular auto clicker just like that so with all that being said our auto clicker functionality is actually now set up and we can go ahead and test this out by going into our game and we go ahead and click on the fast auto clicker and now it might be a little hard to tell but we are actually getting two clicks per second and if we turn on a regular auto clicker we can have we can see that we're also getting one click per second and those are both working perfectly and we can see that the fast auto clicker was actually turned off and so was the regular one as well when they both expired meaning this is all working perfectly so with all that being said we now have a working auto clicking system the last thing that we want to do is go back inside of our template and readjust the duration from 10 to 0 so the players don't start off with any auto clicker by default and then we can go ahead and save our game and we now have a working auto clicking script anyways ladies and gentlemen with all that being said we now have a working auto clicker system in our game if you guys did enjoy the video make sure you smash the like button also the subscribe button and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, with Patreon, if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the script and the game file that I made during this episode, there's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.